In 2023, my goal is to help as many organizations as possible to deploy MFA using conditional access. So to help with that today, I'm going to walk through a set of policies that I call the baseline uh, to help an organization or fictional organization get MFA deployed out. The goal of this is so that you can see how another organization would deploy out MFA using conditional access and the set of policies that you can build from it. Hey everybody, I'm Doug Does Tech, and this video series is gonna be all about deploying conditional access policies using several different types of policies. So we're gonna do a couple different videos on you know, different organizational requirements and videos about how to securely deploy MFA for them. So that's what this is all gonna be about. So let's get into it and let's deploy the baseline MFA policies uh, and we'll walk through that process. So let's deploy the baseline set of policies and every good CA policy, every good deployment is gonna need change control and a really good plan for implementation. So let's use this Excel spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet to walk through how to deploy the baseline set of policies. And you can use this to document these policies and run it through any change that you need to for your organization. So policy goal for the baseline is to require MFA for all admins users and guests. We also want to block legacy authentication. And the goal with this policy is to set yourself up for policy growth and additional security layer that you can build on top of in the future. So that's one of the goals with the baseline. It's a good foundation for deploying MFA, but then you can take it and build security later, do other advanced things with it. And I'll show you that at the end. So here we have the policies and we're going to walk through four set of policies that we need to make this happen. We have one policy that's designed to target your admin accounts. That's the policy I'm going to recommend that you turn on today for yourself and for your other admins to make sure that those admins are using MFA. We have one policy for our standard users one to take care of legacy authentication, and one to take care of guest users. So overall, a simple set of policies, but gives you some flexibility to do it. As part of the documentation, it will be in here how to set this policy up, and I'll recover it in the video when we actually get into the portal. And then for all of the apps, I'm gonna target all cloud apps. You may want to adjust that to things that are only relevant to you, but, <clears throat> with a simple set of policies to make sure you're protecting yourself. Targeting all cloud apps for MFA is a very strong strategy to start with. You might discover there might be things that you can't do this with, like maybe a SQL server box for that developer and you need to make an exclusion for them. That's okay. We're gonna use these policies to figure out all of those situations and then deploy it out. And then if you need to make exceptions, feel free to go ahead and do that. For almost all of the conditions in this set of policies, we're gonna use basically nothing in there. So it targets the broadest areas. We don't wanna punch a bunch of holes in our conditional access policies and you know, have this gap that you know, might exist. These policies are designed to be simple. So we're just gonna target a couple of you know, key things with the legacy auth components and target and, and block that essentially. And then again, in the theme of keeping it simple, we're just we're gonna reuse the MFA requirement control here. So that's the high level plan of what we're gonna be doing, nothing else in the organization. Terms and conditions do apply to this uh, deployment. I have a set, set of policies that I uh, use, and overall the tenant is a fairly new tenant. If you are concerned about your tenant and if you have every one of the settings uh, covered that goes into it, Watch my last video where I cover kind of the high level other settings that you want to use to make sure that they are, you know, in alignment with how I do it. I'll list here the settings that uh, I use and the other areas that you might want to check that influence your MFA policies um, and the end user experience. So use that video uh, and these links here uh, to make sure you're protected in those situations. All right, that's the high level. Now let's actually go in and deploy these set of policies. So here we are in our fictional Contoso organization and let's go ahead and deploy the baseline set of policies. So we're in the conditional access blade and I'm gonna go ahead and use a lot of the same content from the Excel spreadsheet to make it work. So first policy that we're gonna deploy is our MFA admin account policies. 
simple to design. All you're gonna do is come into select users and groups, and we're gonna come in and select the directory roles for our organization. Most important one to target is your global administrator, but you should target the other roles in your organization. If the easy way to do it is to actually come in and just check all the boxes. I know that may be a little bit uh, cumbersome, but that's the best way to make sure you get full coverage of all your admin accounts. So we're just gonna quickly burn through all of this to make sure we're selecting everything that has a admin role and achieving MFA for them. This is a key component for me that I always like to do in organizations. Any admin should have MFA, full stop, right? If they're an admin account, they need MFA in their organization and need that security aspect in. So we're gonna go ahead and select all of these and little cumbersome, I know, I know there's a lot of checkbox involved with it, but it's gonna be worth it in the end when your organization is nice and secure. Almost there. All right, so we're set. That is the policy that we wanna do. One thing to, um, important thing to note with this set of policies, you may want to do an exclude on this specifically if you had a break glass account in your organization or you had a permanent exclude list. So uh, I don't think I have a break glass in here, but you know, it's a very common practice to have, for instance, a break glass, and Microsoft even recommends a break glass account that is global admin secured cloud only uh, and excluded from MFA. So that might be something that you want to consider in your organization. And it's important at this point as doing this to have a way to get back into your organization. So uh, for me, I'm gonna come into just this standard admin account that we use for uh, backups. And we'll put that one. as the break glass for this organization, All right? Next step, all cloud apps. We're targeting everything in our organization, no exclusions. Admins need MFA for everything. I'm not gonna exclude any apps by default unless I have to. Conditions, no conditions. I know there's a lot of uh, you know desire to get really granular with your CA and only affect your accounts in certain situations, but this is gonna be something that we hold off on and you know, really to avoid putting a gap in where there's a scenario where you might not have an MFA. So keep it simple, stupid. That's the goal with this set of policies. Grant, what's the grant control that we want to use? This one specifically, we want to use, uh, when it loads, the MFA prompt grant. So that's slow. There it goes. So we wanna use the, the standard multi-factor authentication one, and that's the one we're gonna use across our organization. But you as an organization, I'm gonna recommend you begin switching to a stronger form of authentication, specifically for your admin accounts. And the one I'm gonna recommend every org get is the phishing resistant MFA. This is gonna require a FIDO2 security key for your admin accounts. Right, they're not terribly expensive, but this is the strongest form of authentication. And I would love to see every org out there use this for their global admins. Um, but you might not be over there yet. Start here as the baseline. And then as you grow, switch over some of your accounts to that stronger auth. And then once you have some FIDO2 experience, turn on this set of policies uh, and you can come in and really make sure you're securing your accounts. So that's the admin policy. Let's leave it in report only for right now uh, and go ahead and create it. After you got your admin policy created in report only, you can use your um, audit logs to check to see if this account is going to be affected. You can use the report only status to see how many things that this might hit on and analyze those results. I'm not going to do that for today. The important thing to do is before you enable your admin policy, go in and register your admin account for MFA. So to do that, we're gonna to go to aka.ms slash MFA setup, and you need to go through the process of enrolling your own admin account in the MFA experience that Microsoft has. I've already done this for this uh, account, 
but let's just go ahead and verify the MFA that we have done here. And here you can see my iPhone is currently enrolled in MFA, so I am good to go. If you wanted to add a secondary backup method, which is always a good uh, you know, idea, whether that be a phone or a security key, you can do it at this time. I always like to have for my admin accounts two forms pre-registered of supported methods. So if you lose your phone, you can still get in and I would highly recommend that. So before you turn on that policies, make sure your admin account is registered for MFA so it just doesn't cause any issues. Once you've registered, let's go ahead and turn that on, right? Again, you should check to see if there's any break glasses or exclusions that you need to make before turning this on, like service accounts that might have global admin or something like that. But go ahead and target this and then turn that policy on. So that's policy one, we are now set. So let's go ahead and move on to policy two, the policy that's gonna affect our standard set of users in our organization. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that name. One note you will see in here is that I have a specific format that I use for my name classification. And this is just a, a me thing, right? To make it easy for me to read kind of what's going on. There's lots of different recommendations from Microsoft on um, different ways to format your conditional access names to make it easier to read. But what I do is I just make it simple. Uh, I put the, the control that we're gonna do in the front and then just a little descriptor for this. So if I'm looking at a lot of different policies, I can see very quickly the control or grant that this policy does, and then a little descriptor of it. That's just my thing, that helps me. You can do, of course, whatever you want. All right, so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and target all users in your policy. This is where I want you to get to when you set up the standard users. If you need a slow rollout of your policies, that's fine because you can do that, right? So just target some user groups that are maybe like a HAPO group, like A through you know X or A through you know whatever, um, you know A through G and then you know G on or something like that. Create some HAPO groups or create some departmental groups that you're going to target to slow roll people in. But the end goal is to get it into this all user state. Um, as part of that deployment, right? And so lots of different ways to roll it out. If you need to roll it out slow, great. Just come in and you know set some groups in there as the, the target all user groups. But once you're done, you really wanna to get to this all user status here. Excludes, on this set of all standard user policies, we're gonna do a couple of different excludes here. We're actually gonna exclude guests from these set of policies because we're gonna do that with a separate policy. We're also gonna exclude directory roles in this. And again, come into your set of directory roles and check the boxes for it. Um, again, I'm gonna you know, really clear out my global administrator because I'm handling that in another policy. So I wanna make it easy um, to make sure that I only have one set of policies affecting that. And then plan for exclusions. Your help desk and you might need some exclusions. So I have some groups pre-created usually for that situation that's going to come up inevitably in your deployment that a you know a end user might need to be excluded. I usually do two sets of groups. So I'll do a permanent exclude group from MFA and that's for service accounts, things that may, you know, you may not want existing in your environment or uh and then a temporary, you know, uh user group. So this is a hey you know, XYZ end user called. Instead of having to modify your CA policies, you can come in and just add a user to this existing exclude or help desk can add a user to the existing exclude and secure it. So let's, let's plan for that inevitable situation so that we have a good, quick, easy way to fix the scenario before it's a big one. Also highly recommend using cloud groups for these MFA exclude. So it's instant versus an AD synced group that you know may take 15 minutes for it to sync up that the end user is a member of that group. So uh, you know, just a note there. All right, again on cloud apps, we're gonna select all cloud apps, conditions, no conditions again for this policy, and then new grant. This is where we're just gonna use that simple require multi-factor authentication. Again, go ahead and create it in report only and enable it when you are ready to deploy that out. Again, the nice thing about the report only policies is you can check your sign-in logs and see how much this would affect your organization. And there's some nice graphing and insights and reports that you can take advantage of. 
Third policy, let's get that block on legacy authentication going. Uh, at this point, you have secured your organization from your set of, you know, main set of policies, right? Once you have that other policy deployed, you want to get the legacy authentication protocols that don't support MFA, and we want to block them from use in our organization. Again, in this case, we're gonna select all users uh, as part of the policy. It, you may want to exclude if you know in advance that, hey, we have this one application that uses legacy auth, feel free to exclude it at this point. Otherwise, let's just build it out standard because eventually you should be moving away from that. Microsoft wants to get rid of all those protocols anyways. And I'm, you know, if they're not already disabled in your tenant, you know, you're gonna want to remove them anyways just because they're so weak and so targeted for hacks. Other conditions that we wanna do in this one is the targeting of the specific client apps. So here you can see under client apps, we have browser and mobile apps. And then we have these set of legacy authentication protocols that are in use. And those are the ones that we wanna target for blocking in our organization. Now, in the policy, once we have that up and running, we're gonna go into this and switch it to a block command. All right. So you're set there. Nice thing about how Microsoft designs this is that it is going to inform you if your policy is going to affect your user account. In this case, the admin policy of this will be affected and it wants you to say, I understand that in my account. I don't use legacy authn for anything. And so we're gonna go ahead and create that. And at this point, again, you can create it in report only to check that audit log. Um, or if you know you already don't use that, or you've told users you don't want to move it, you can come in and just mark it to on. All right, so fourth policy that we want to deploy as part of this baseline is guests. You probably have B2B guests in your organization, so let's go ahead and target those users specifically and also require them to have to MFA to get into our environment. So final policy here, we're going to set this up. I am a big believer that if your end users are requiring MFA, we should definitely require any B2B guests that access your tenant. They are just as uh, dangerous to your organization as a end user. So let's target all of them and put this in place. Um, all right, pretty simple there. Again, you may need to set up and exclude every once in a while. And in this case, you know, we can come in uh, and set up that exclude option in there, uh, right? And target that as part of this deployment uh, and we're good to go. So all cloud apps again, no conditions. And then the control in this one is grant multi-factor authentication. Mark it as on and go ahead and create it. At this point, your admin, your guests are gonna be required to MFA and your admins are gonna be required to MFA. And that is a great set of policies you need to do. Again, for the deployment of the MFA policies, it may be prudent in your organization to switch it over to a group that you're gonna include and roll in everybody into this. And so you can certainly do that. I, uh, I made a mistake here. This was supposed to be my include group and that's my exclude group. Um, but you can come in and, you know, deploy that out and turn that on. So you can start slow rolling end users in after you get your admin accounts up and running. So there we go. That's the baseline set of policies, um, that, you know, I really highly recommend every org roll out. The most important of these is your admin accounts. Again, I can't say it enough. If you don't have MFA on your admin accounts, please deploy this set of policies out to your organization. Uh, it will make a huge impact in securing your accounts and your whole organization. So what questions do you have? Please put them in the chat. I would love to help you with deploying this MFA. If you deploy MFA deploy, uh, with this set of baselines, please let me know if it helps. I would love to uh, support. Um, that's it for today. Um, good luck out there and stay safe.